Hi everyone, welcome to episode 78 of Wool and Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. Um, thank you so much for joining me. We are just fresh back from being away this weekend and swimming in a lake and just having lots of fun with our trailer and uh, with the kids. Oh hi Nora, are you going to come say hello? And uh, we're just getting back into our routine and just trying to figure out getting back into regular life. Um, this is the first week back to school for those living in Canada. I know in other parts of the U.S. Okay, one sec. Um, people have been back to school for a week or two at this point, maybe even longer. Um, for us, though, uh, we tend to return back on the first Tuesday of the month after the first Monday of the month in September. So that's sort of how our school system works. So James's first day is actually tomorrow, which is Thursday. And uh, I think today is September... Yeah, it's September 6th, 2017. So we've got big, big changes coming because uh, he's just starting kindergarten. So that's really exciting for us. This is Nora for those who have not met her yet and have not seen her on the show yet. Do you want to say hi to everybody? Hi. <laughs> and how are you? Good. <laughs> um, she joins us sometimes. Else. You can tell them something else. Okay. We want, uh, um, James is playing What's the puzzles? That's right. He's playing puzzles, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And are you going to go play too? I'm, not, I'm playing camping. Awesome. You're playing camping. Do you want to welcome all the new viewers? Do you want to say welcome to new viewers? Welcome to new viewers. New viewers and welcome to returning viewers? Welcome to new... Uh, new and returning. I don't want to say <laughs> Is it too many big words? <laughs> <laughs> and thank you especially to anybody who supports the show through Patreon. You guys know that uh, you hold a special place in my heart and I really appreciate your ongoing support. Um, to those who are Patreon subscribers, the uh, latest episode of Wool and Spinning Radio has been released for early access and those who have regular access in Patreon will have access as of this Friday. So. I had accidentally uh, clicked a button that everybody had access this month. So if you saw it a bit early and then saw that it was revoked, it was only because I hit the wrong button. So I'm sorry about a little bit of confusion. How I Spin has been released, which is part of our enhanced content and um, our thoughtful spinner for the month has been released as well. I think that is everything for housekeeping. Um, we have a little bit of to talk about with Tour de Fleece. Um, I know I that- don't forget. That's right, we're gonna move bedrooms, aren't we? You're gonna be in James's room and James is gonna have your bedroom? Yeah. Um, Tour de Fleece ended at the end of July. I'm still waiting to hear from some people. You guys won some prizes. The Anybody who won a spindle who hasn't heard, hasn't received it in the mail yet, there's a reason. I just, I haven't uh, actually mailed them out yet. Um, they are quite bulky, as you can see. And I can't, um, I need to get some special, oh, do you want to hold it for me? Um, I need to get some special uh, bags to be able to um, transport them safely in the mail so that they get to you in one piece and not broken. So those of you who are waiting for a spindle and one that, uh, please um, just be patient. Um, if you haven't listened to the extra episode that was a woolen spinning radio episode that was open to everybody, it wasn't a Patreon only thing, um, I will link it to you in the show notes, wellforpearls.com, and to those who I haven't heard from, I will send you a note in the next week or so if I haven't heard from you. Um, yeah, and some of the other stuff has already gone out in the mail, and I hope you guys have received it and are enjoying it. Uh, Spinzilla is coming up at the end, beginning of October. I have actually made a very difficult decision and I'm not going to be participating this year. I had said that I would be captioning the uh, Team Sweet Georgia. My friend Katrina Crafty Jacks, a lot of you know her from the Slack channel and from the Ravelry group, is actually going to be taking that on. Um, there's just a little bit too much going on in our little world right now and um, I decided to make the very, very difficult decision to step back. So. Um, that is sort of, um, it was a tough one. I, I had second thoughts back on Friday on September 1st when the uh, registration opened up and I, I was so tempted, but I just knew that it's not the right time in our life right now and I really needed a break this year. So um, I think that is everything. I wanted to quickly answer a question from the Ask Anything thread on Ravelry. I'm not going to um, 
answer a specific question today. There, I've been getting a lot of questions recently about raw fleece and what you do with raw fleece and just a couple of specific questions. So I thought that I would address a couple of them today and give you guys sort of some ideas. And then if there's more questions about um, processing fleece or um, how to store raw fleece, all that kind of stuff that I don't answer or maybe it provokes a question in you that you want to ask, then you can go over to the thread in Ravelry in the Ravelry group. Pop your question in there and I'll um, address it next time. When so in a few minutes, Joko play. So one of the questions that I got was how do I store raw fleeces? I've had this question a few times and I keep forgetting to uh, answer it. One of the um, things that I always say is do as I say, not as I do, because I tend to uh, store my stuff in plastic. I know that's terrible, but I do tend to keep it in plastic bags. Um, part of the reason for this is that I, I tend to have a lot of turnover in my stash. I don't tend to hold on to things for years and years and years. If you're going to be keeping your stuff for a really long time, it's best to store it in a pillowcase, a burlap sack, something that is going to um, allow the, the fleece and the, and the wool to breathe. Some people use cedar chips to deter moths. So what you can do is put a layer, put them in a in a tote, like a plastic tote. You can put um, a layer of newspaper, preferably um, not printed, so plain newsprint, a layer of cedar chips, and then another layer of newsprint, and then put your fiber on top of that. And then if you're really paranoid and you know you have moths in your area, you can do another layer of um, newsprint at the top with a layer of cedar chips and then newsprint. Um, you can always put your cedar chips in little potpourri bags um, so that it doesn't actually no, no, get... Okay, right okay. All over the, the wool itself. Um, I have just used the cedar chips, so I have little bags of cedar chips and I put them in my totes. I touch wood, haven't had problems with moths. I maybe would be a lot more... Um, paranoid if I had um, I but like I said I tend to turn my stash over quite a bit and the plastic bags like this that the comb top comes in I tend to keep it in there um, when I need um, to store stuff I've got both kids in here now so I'm gonna take a break and see if I can get them interested in something and then I'll finish the uh, recording one sec guys one of the um, questions in the Ravelry thread that I got as well was, um, I think it was from Eve actually, she asked if I process and she wanted feedback from the group as well, whether or not she or any of us process all in one go. So do we take the entire fleece and process the entire thing or do we do it in pieces? So I, it really depends for me. I do a little bit of both. I have processed entire fleeces. I've done that a couple of times where I've drum carded up the entire fleece. Um, my only problem with that is I drum carded up an entire fleece a couple of years ago. I still haven't spun it. Um, I want to, it's on my list. I just haven't gotten it done. Um, when you do it in pieces, I find it tends to um, motivate you to keep going because you sort of bite off a little bit, get it done, do a little bit more, get it done, do a little bit more. The problem with that is your consistency and your spinning. If you've got a spinner's control card kind of like this, which I'll talk about later in the show, and you can spin consistently and you can keep yourself consistent throughout your spin, then you probably are going to be able to do that and process it in bits and pieces. Or if you've got several plans for the fleece, then process one bit of it for one project, process a bit of it for another project. But it really depends on what you want out of your fleece and what you're doing. Like if you're hand combing the entire fleece with little tiny hand combs, you're probably going to take a while to process it. So it might be process a bunch of it, spin a little bit, process more of it, spin a little bit more. Um, you really have to figure out what works for you so that over time you're still enjoying the process and it also gets done if, if that's the end goal. One of the other things that I really wanted to mention was um, when it comes to working with bats, um, often when you receive bats or if you make a bat of your own, people fold them up and they roll them up really tightly or when you receive one in the mail, if you've bought one, um, they get rolled and, and you know for shipping, which makes total sense. When I'm processing raw fleece in particular, I tend to keep the bats flat and laid out. I don't tend to roll them up and make them um, really compact and I don't tend to take out the air. Um, and I find this keeps it airier, it keeps it fresher. 
the longer a bat is um, comp compressed for, the more air is going to come out of it and the more compacted it's going to become. So if you can leave them laying out in a plastic bin, I find that works really well. And you can just stack them on top of each other as you're processing and leave them laid out. Um, it's also nice motivation to see the bat sitting there and ready to spin, which is really great. So in today's show, I have a little bit of spinning that I wanted to share with you. One thing I wanted to get finished and get it off my wheel isn't actually done and off the wheel. So I'll talk about it a little bit, but I'm going to share it with you next week. And I have some hand spun knitting to share with you. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. Okay, so let's get on with chatting about my projects and whatnot and what I've been working on. I've got the kids watching a movie. Um, it's the middle of the afternoon here and normally I wouldn't do that. Normally I wouldn't even be recording. Um, but the reason for this is because we got back late last night and um, I didn't get the show recorded. The kids had a really, really good sleep. Today is kind of like our last day of freedom before real life starts. So tomorrow James is going into his classroom for the first time. Um, the kids are getting their haircuts tonight. So, cause they both look like um, little surfer kids, uh, which is awesome. But you know, it school photos are coming up. Like there's just all this stuff. And today is kind of like our last day of toddlerhood like we're definitely going into a new chapter and so I asked them if I could record they were both like yep no problem we'd love to you know get that done mom and of course as soon as I turn on the camera they're both in here and wanting my attention so um they have been awesome we've had a crazy weekend and they're tired um and I just want to get a couple of things done so just bear with me this week um it's a bit of an odd week for us so I know those of you who are parents out there really understand and um I've talked about it lots on the on the show about sort of trying to juggle everything and you guys have been very gracious about sort of understanding and just being really wonderful so excuse all the interruptions today um and also the light right now is perfect because um, we have kind of like, well, so if anybody's been following the news, what BC has been in the midst of tons and tons of wildfires this summer and they haven't let up at all because it's been so dry and so hot. And um, a bunch of the uh, smoke is actually has settled over us here where we live. But it's creating this really cool light. So in some ways it's a good time to record, which is why I wanted to because I've got good light. So. Anyways, bear with me. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about in terms of my spins that I'm working on is um, some Sweet Georgia Amethyst. So this is uh, BFL. Um, it's Superwash BFL. It's been in my stash for quite a long time. I had bought it a while ago um, off of the seconds, um, out of the seconds bin at the studio when I was teaching because um, it was, I think it was in the seconds because it was a broken braid. Um, and so I had sort of put it away and then it actually is part of my spin the bin for this year. So that's um, something that goes on yearly in the completely twisted and arbitrary group on Ravelry. So if you're interested in learning more, you can go over there or you can go back to some of the um, episodes that I recorded back in January. Um, because I talked quite a bit about my bin for this year. So I'm not gonna repeat myself here because I know a lot of you have already heard it. Um, this is, I'm down to like my last three braids that I need to spin for my bin, which is awesome. I never actually formally signed up, but I am getting through my bin, which feels really good. Um, this is the first spin out of my bin that I'm actually doing a three ply. So I divided the braid up into three. The first braid I stripped 18 times and I spun, um, fine singles. I think I'm spinning to a wraps per inch of, I didn't bring my control card. I always make one of these for my projects and I, for, I forgot it in the other room. Um, I think I'm spinning to about 32 wraps per inch if I'm correct and I should end up with a 20 wraps per inch yarn or something like that. I can't remember exactly what my, what my numbers were but I'm going for a fine three ply. 
it'll be socks for me eventually. Um, and I think I, oh, I didn't say I'm assuming this on my, um, Susie, um, my magic craft Susie on the 14 and a half ratio. So I've been getting to know that wheel. It's been really, um, awesome so far. I've been, it's been a really good fit for me. I really like the adjustable orifice. Um, so you can actually swing the flyer from side to side and you can adjust the height of it, which really seems to be working well for me. I also um, am really finding that I like the speed of the wheel. Um, it's not too, too fast, but it's also not slow at all. It's, I have the Magic the Suzy Pro, so it's the one that has a slightly different wheel that's supposed to be a smoother spin, but I've spun on the one that's not the Pro as well, and it's equally smooth. Um, I ordered the lace kit for it, so that'll give me ratios up to 28 to 1, and I'm hoping that this winter I can spend some time playing with some cashmere that I bought back at Fibers West, as well as some cotton. So I'm looking forward to receiving that in the mail. It's it's on its way from Magicraft, it just hasn't arrived yet. So um, that's really great, and I'm really enjoying that spin, and hopefully I'll have it finished next show and I'll show it to you. The other thing that I'm working on is actually on my Lendroom. I've been working on my uh, bulky flyer, um, and I have been spinning on a ratio of, I think I'm spinning nine to one. So I'm on the smallest whirl on the bulky flyer on the Lendrum and I'll insert some photos here and you can have a look at what this spin looks like. Um, I core spun up some sport weight yarn um, that was in my stash that I just wanted to get rid of. I core spun over it with some comb top that I had dyed a couple of years ago that I had fulled while I was dying. And it was a uh, merino, alpaca blend it was um i bought it at berkland brothers here in in abbotsford and i was just playing with it um i gave some to my friend chrissy she because it was a bit full i think she carded it all up and spun it and played with some woolen spinning um woolen style spinning and i decided to core spin mine uh, and then I'm doing some auto wrapping on it as well with some thread from my stash just to use up some of my old my mom gave me this big bag of polyester thread from her stash, from her sewing stash, that she's never gonna use in a million years. So she gave it all to me and I've been auto wrapping it on onto the yarn. And then I'm actually gonna ply it with some white um, to make it a two ply. So the reason for making this yarn is actually because when I was at Anwig back in July, so that was the weaving conference that I went to, the Association of Northwest Weavers Association. I can't remember exactly how that acronym goes. Um, and I did that Bast Fibers class that I talked about back in July. During that class, um, one of the faculty members from the, um, I think she's from the Faculty of Aboriginal Studies, uh, she came by with this louette that's probably about 10 years old. It doesn't say whether it's an S10 or an S11, it's really hard to tell. And um, it just is missing its footman. And she asked if anybody in the class could use it or would take it because she decided that she wasn't a spinner. She didn't want to learn how to spin and pursue it, but that she really loved art yarn. And if somebody would take the wheel, could they please make her a skein of art yarn in return? So I've actually gifted the wheel on to a friend of mine because I don't need another wheel and I don't want to keep another wheel, but I was the only person in the class that was local and not flying. So I took the wheel home and uh, my friend Kelsey's going to fix it all up and get it working. And so this core spun yarn is actually going to go to Teresa. So she's the lady that, that donated the wheel to me and that I've gifted on to Kelsey. And I'm going to send her this yarn. My sister-in-law actually works at UVic and is um, going to be able to pass it on to Teresa for me, which is great. So. Oh dear. Yes, I can get you some water with ice. Okay. I'll be right there, James. No. Okay. James really wants some water with ice. <laughs> so I'll go get that for him and then I'll tell you about my knitting project. One sec. So you guys know that I've been working on a uh, big um, wall hanging for in our bedroom. Um, I talked about this on either last episode or the episode before. So maybe just check back. Um, this is the pop blanket by uh, Tin Can Knits and I have made massive progress. So I knit up 60 squares. I am so sick of these squares. Um, the middle is all my hand spun and then around the outside is cascade to 20. And I have sewn a whole bunch of them together. So I these are rows of 14 and there's gonna be four rows in total. And I had mentioned on a previous show that I'm gonna have driftwood at the top 
um, to hang it from. And I've actually decided to put a fringe on the bottom, kind of like what you would get on a, um, a tapestry weaving. Uh, I'm sure you guys have all seen those weavings on Instagram that are really super popular right now um, that have, um, they, they're kind of a throwback to the 1970s with the fringe on the bottom and they're all um, um, off of the frame looms. Um, so I've got, I actually probably would have had this all sewn together yesterday on our drive home. Um, we were in the car for about six hours because we hit really bad traffic. But I kind of got to the point where I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Um, my husband and I were having a really good chat about some things and I just didn't want to work on it anymore. Um, so I laid it out while we were camping and I put all the squares sort of where I want them to be and sorted them all out. And then I stacked them up and I'll show it to you in just a sec. I stacked them all up by row so, um, so that I had 14 in each pile. And then um, I actually, let me just show you. And then I actually um, sewed them, like I stuck some yarn through them to keep them in, in order. And then I tied them um, so that while we were driving, I just lift lifted off the top, sewed it to the next one, lifted this one off, sewed it to the next one. One sec, Nora, I'm recording. And then eventually, and then of course I work my way through the pile. And then all I have to do is um, put, this one goes at the very bottom and then the orange one goes on top. This one is number three and then my last one goes at the top. And I took a picture of that so that I knew um, what the order was. So it's a bit complicated and a little bit labor intensive to get it all sewn together. Um, and the ends, I am so not looking forward to weaving in all these ends. Oh my goodness, you guys. There's just hundreds of ends. Because it's gonna be a wall hanging and it's gonna go on the wall and it's not really gonna be used at all, it's just gonna sit there. I've been very naughty and I've actually been knotting the back, um, the, the yarns at the back, um, and then just um, weaving them in only once or twice because it's just too much. And then as I'm uh, crocheting each row together, I'm not gonna cut any of this just yet um, because I wanna make sure that when I'm picking up to sew them across and the, 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 um, the pattern tells you how to sew everything together. I just wanna make sure that my sewing is right before I start um, weaving in all those ends. So it's definitely been a labor of love um, I'm almost finished and uh, I've got just a little bit of sewing left but it's it's still like hours of work left I did find a really cool branch while we were gone and so I'm hoping that it'll work because it's really neat and it's got quite a bit of dried moss on it it's just really cool it's obviously been sitting all summer and uh, it has it's not wet at all it's all completely dried I'm hoping that it'll be um, perfect for hanging on our wall to finish this off because um, I thought because my husband and I really felt like this past weekend when we were away that it was kind of the last like big trip and it was sort of the culmination of the last five years and James starting school. Nora stop yelling I am recording and I will be there in a moment. Do you want me to close the door and stop screaming? Yeah, flower heart. I want this to be happy flower heart. Perfect. Now stop yelling. And we really felt like it was sort of the culmination of these last five years with James going to school next week. And it was sort of like the, the ending of a chapter. And so I thought if I could find a piece of driftwood, it's not really driftwood, but a piece of... Um, um, a branch out of the out of the campground where we were staying um, because the, the provincial parks here in British Columbia and Alberta and Washington and, and Oregon for that matter they're they're usually set in sort of these really beautiful locations and um, this park was no different so I found this branch and um, I think it's birch and I I'm or pine anyways it doesn't matter um, I'm gonna I'm hoping that I can use it for the wall hanging to finish it all off um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about, and I'm just looking around to see if I can find it all, is this control card that I keep flashing. 
Um, this actually is commercial yarn on here. So this is sort of a little segue because this is a project that I'm planning to do. In the Ravelry group, we've been talking about doing um, a, the year of um, haps and doing a hap along. So haps are a type of shawl. Um, head into the Ravelry group and participate in that discussion if you want to learn more because that thread has just gone crazy. Everybody is so excited about their haps. Um, I have some fiber that I have been kind of stashing for a long time. And this is a sliver of Coriadale that I got from Birkeland Brothers eons ago. Like I'm talking like probably eight, eight to 10 years ago. Um, and it has a lot of neps in it and a lot of um, inconsistencies. Um, this was from before they um, upgraded their equipment. And I have been slowly um, processing it by hand, like re-combing it and taking a bunch of the naps out. And I finally got a hackle and so I've decided to hackle it and I'm actually going to use that for my hap. I have some of it already spun up and I'm just going to match it and work on that. So while I was going through my stash and going through my old um, wool, I came across this, which I flashed earlier. And this is from Custom Woolen Mills in Alberta, in Carstairs, Alberta and it's poly pay and i need to look up more on what poly pay exactly is but it's a it feels very down breed ish if not down breed and it's like it's very springy it's very um um it feels like like a softer suffolk um it's definitely sheepy smelling um and there's a ton of like neps in it and and bumps and there's a lot of vm in it um, and it's been in my stash for a year or more. And I'm going to um, blend it up with something else. So I'm going to do some sampling. And I am going to probably blend it up with some of my BFL from my stash that's left over. I've got all this white wool right now. And I just want to like use it. Because I'd really like to do some dyeing with my friend Katrina. And... Um, I want to get some of this stuff spun up and just really enjoy working with it and kind of work, you know, work through my stash like I've been talking about for the last year or so. Anyways, so I'm going to spin this up. I'm going to do some blending with the BFL, do some sampling. But basically why I'm telling you all this is because I stumbled on this sweater on Ravelry out of the blue. Like I just stumbled on it by accident. And I can't remember exactly what it's called. I think it's called a manor. Um... I'm not sure that that sounds right. I'll see if I can look it up. And um, I just loved it. I'm not really sure why. It's just a plain garter stitch, straight front. Like, it's not really anything super special. But I think it was just the wearability of it that struck me. And it's knit in Cascade 220. No, it's not. It's knit in a yarn that's a really interesting um, blend. Oh, Marmore, it's called. Um, it's knit in this really interesting blended yarn. And it's, it's a, the yarn itself looks like an I-cord. Like, it looks like it's a knitted I-cord. Um, it's Pima cotton and wool. Um, and like I said, it's this weird I-cord. I would really recommend looking at the yarn. It's a really interesting yarn. It's uh, Wool Folk Luft in bulky so it's seven wraps per inch so a lot of people i noticed have been substituting um cascade 220 for it and i kind of thought this is the, another photo of the sweater i kind of thought that what i could do is use up some of the wools that are in my stash and i really like this very natural very soft 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 gray um, yarn that they've used for it and I sort of thought well I have tons and tons of creamy undyed white in my stash I could probably do a gray wash on it with a really um, you know like a, um, instead of like a 2% um, depth of shade I could go with like a 0.5% depth of shade or something like that and I thought if I blended some of this stuff up I would get through my stash and because it's a bulky yarn um, it would you know I'd need quite a bit of yardage um, you know, quite a bit of like a weight, um, of fiber. So it got me thinking, I took the Cascade 220 out of my stash and I took a little sample of it, a couple of yards. Nora, one moment. Okay. I'm literally almost done. Okay. 
I took some Cascade 220 out of my stash and I took like a two yard sample of it and I looked at the twist angle which is about 55% uh, 50% and it's um, seven wraps per inch so which is very consistent with what the yarn in the sweater pattern is called is calls for and I unwrapped it so this length here is five inches and I unwrapped it and it took me six twists to unwrap it so it's going to need about six twists per five inches to match this um, finished yarn for the plying and then I took the single and I unwrapped it until it was untwisted and that was about four twists over that five inches to untwist it. It made me realize how little twist is in the singles of Cascade Eco and Cascade Eco Plus because um, that's not a lot of twist and honest to goodness like even just the singles like if I pulled on the, the twisted single I could draft it apart. It wasn't truly twist locked, which was really interesting to learn. Um, so when I recreate the yarn, I'm going to put a little bit more twist into the singles and a little bit more twist into the plying. Um, so I need to put about 12 inches of, um, sorry, 12 twists over about 15 inches of yarn to recreate these singles. And then the ply twist, I need about 18 twists over the 12, 15 inches to replicate the yarn. So there's a whole bunch of um, math there. This is actually going to be the yarn that I feature in the How I Spin for October. So if you want to know more, please check out the uh, Enhanced Early Bird on Patreon. And I'm going to work through how I deconstruct a yarn and then how I go about recreating a yarn. Because um, it's a lot of information to get in on, into on the podcast and it's way too much to try to cover. I'll answer some questions about it um, in the live stream in a couple of weeks and you guys can ask um, your burning questions. But basically, um, I what I would like to do with this blend that I want to make out of the PolyPay and the BFL is blend up um, a couple of small bats and I'm going to see if I can recreate the yarn and see if I can make this yarn and then I'll do a knitted sample and see if it's close enough to the yarn that's used in the Marmor. Um, and see if I can recreate the sweater. So I'm actually quite excited about it and we'll see how it goes. So please wish me luck. Yes. What's her name again? <gasps> Flower Heart. Flower Heart. Nora's naming all of her ponies. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about that project and I hope that uh, you'll follow along on this journey with me because I'm really hoping that I can at least use up all of the poly paint. And after I do some sampling, I'm thinking about like a, like a 70%, 30%, so 70% polypay, 30% BFL. And I'm hoping with that blend that the BFL will give it a little bit of luster and soften it up just a little bit from the polypay. And then putting a little bit of extra twist into it, it'll give me an opportunity to sort of, you know, create a new yarn and create something that, you know, is completely unique and maybe it'll work and maybe it won't. So we'll see. On the Slack channel, um, we have started a new channel called the Health Channel. So it's hashtag health. If you're on the Slack channel and you haven't seen this yet, just go into your sidebar on your smartphone or on the, your desktop. Um, and if you've been in the Slack channel for a while, you'll probably know that there's a health um, a hashtag health channel. Be quiet in here. Okay, thank you. Um, we started this because a lot of us are on some sort of a health and wellness journey. Most of us are sort of trying to, um, you know, look after ourselves. For me, it's all about longevity. I want to be here for a really long time. I want to be strong. Um, and I want to be able to do my, my career job as well as look after the kids and run after them. And so I thought at the end of every podcast from now on, I would just do a really quick sort of health update, health and well-being update. Um, hopefully in an effort to sort of motivate you guys and um, spark discussion around what's working for you and what's not working for you. Because particularly with um, physical activity, healthy eating, all that kind of stuff, um, it's really nice to see women sort of rallying behind women and, and um, you know, pushing each other to uh, be our best version of ourself. I so I made a decision a couple of weeks ago that I was going to seek out um, joining a gym of some kind. I didn't know what it would look like, whether it was just going to the community center where there's a pool and a gym and trying to go to the group fitness classes there. Um, I was really, really interested in joining a CrossFit gym, which I'll talk about in a second. 
Um, and in the end, I actually found a uh, group fitness gym here just a couple of minutes from our house that offers free childcare with your membership. So I've actually ended up joining there. I've been having a great time. Um, they have quite a few different classes. So everything from Zumba and yoga to bar um, to uh, like body sculpting classes, which are actually weight classes. Um, TRX for those who know what that is. So it's um, a lot of cables. And it's actually the first of its kind in Canada, which is kind of exciting that that's, it's only five minutes from my home. So for those who live in the States or in Australia, you maybe have heard of the gym Envy, and that's where I'm going. Um, one of the reasons for making the decision to join a gym is just because I wanted to be around other people who are working out and wanting to get in shape and wanting to uh, make their health a priority. And I've been having a lot of fun. So I thought for those of you who are on the Slack channel, particularly in the health channel, um, that maybe we could share with one another um, what it is that keeps you motivated and keeps you um, working out day after day, week after week, um, whether it's pulling on your gym shoes to go out for a run or um, you know getting in the truck or the van to go to the gym and work out. Um, because over time that motivation wanes and it really isn't about the motivation that keeps you going, it's about the discipline of going daily. I don't feel like going today, but I'm going anyways. And uh, it's nice to hear from others um, what it is that gets you out of bed in the morning because uh, I've been going to the 515 classes in the morning. I thought I would be absolutely exhausted and I wouldn't be able to do it. And I've actually experienced the opposite. I actually have more energy and I'm feeling more um, invigorated that it makes me want to continue with that discipline rather than uh, with that daily discipline rather than throwing it out the window and saying, no, I'm too tired, which is kind of interesting. So I would love to hear from you. And um, if there's anything in particular about my journey that you're curious about, please don't hesitate to ask or to jump into the Ask Anything thread and ask away. And I will share with you on the show what's working and what's not working. I think that's everything for today. The kids are getting kind of squirrely. I appreciate you staying with me and uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. Our next live stream will actually be on Tuesday morning. That will be our new time. So it'll be Tuesday mornings. Let me just double check for you so I can give you the proper date. Nora is starting preschool this year. So I will be doing the live stream on the third Tuesday of every month on Tuesday mornings when she's at school. And our first one that will be on our new schedule will be on Tuesday morning, September 20th. Um, it'll be around 9.15 in the morning. It'll be about 45 minutes because I'm going to have to get back to pick her up because um, it's her first day, so she's only gone for an hour and a half. So um, it will be 9.15 Pacific Standard Time on I'm, September 20th, Tuesday, our, September 20th. I'm changing our beds. Oh, and then we're going to do our, our bedrooms now, aren't we? And, and we are doing our bedrooms. Yeah, we're going to switch bedrooms, aren't we? Yeah. All right, until next time, everyone, happy spinning, and I hope you have a wonderful back to school. Bye. Can I say bye?